And we're on. I'm Pixie. I'm Sen. And you're listening to Nerd Talk. And we'll have some decent looking video after the show's over. We hope. Mm -hmm. um, chat, are you guys there? Can you hear us? Do you want to talk to us? Woo! Yeah, we are back in the old studio. No longer at uh, WLRA. That's done for the summer until we go back for To Kill a DJ, which is our biannual charity to raise money for the Advocate Hope Children's Hospital Family Assistance Fund. It is fun times. It is money to help um, the struggling financial needs of sick children and their families. It's, it's, it's good times all around. And this time, we're actually going to hopefully be running some auctions, so stay tuned for more information on that. Yes. With any luck, we will actually be posting things to some sort of auction site to allow people to um, purchase them. Yep. There will be nerdy things available for purchase. All of the proceeds we're just going to dump into that fund for the hospital, so... Uh, Stay tuned for more info on we're, that. We're hoping to break some records here. As a studio, I think the station wants to do like ten or 20,000. Um, one of the shows, the Big Burrito radio program, nice guys. Um, you should check them out Saturday mornings. Uh, they've already raised two grand by themselves. And, and the they official, haven't even gotten the yeah, announcement the, yet. Yeah, the official fundraising has not even started yet. And they're already at 2K. So, so. can we just declare that they're cheating then? <laughs> We, we could officially declare them as cheating, but I don't know if you can cheat at charity. Sure you can. Cherry cheaters. I don't know. Alright, so, tonight we will be reviewing Deus Ex Human Revolution. Does it live up to the original, or is it more of an invisible war? We'll see. And, let's see, do we have some news? We've got a bit of news, and actually something related to our, our main topic of the evening. Um, Square Enix has let the license out for there to actually be a production of Deus Ex Human Revolution clothing for sale in North America and Europe from the official Square Enix store. Um, so you can just follow the link, which I'll go ahead and tag here. Give me just a second. Chatter's moment. All right, Facebook has been updated. Now I just got to let Twitter know that we're live. Twits, follow that. Yeah, nothing quite as cool as, like, Adam Jensen's formal clothing yet, but, uh, yeah, it, it's potential. You know, un unfortunately, there's no way to, to buy an augmented limb, which, which kind of disappoints me. Of Still, course. um, really sweet shirt. Yeah, I'm definitely digging that. And decent prices. None of these are, like, hideous. So. Oh, no, my Twitter's acting up. How on earth am I going to let my tweeps know we are live? Tweeps, that's what we're calling them these? Yes, that's that's a thing. I'm wondering what on earth is entailed by Deus Ex Genes? It's like... Hard edges, triangular shapes, and great fashion design, apparently. I guess. <laughs> great. <laughs> Tony the Tiger endorses this. Oh, well, look, it's got yellow lacing, so you can yeah. probably use that. Orange, there's, there's lots of orange in Deus Ex. I, I don't... Get it. <laughs> it's a thing. It's their, like, theme color type of thing. Ah, uh, like, I, I like this long sleeve shirt. I think that's cool. I, I like the, the gritting pattern. This looks cool. You could wear this out and everyone wouldn't necessarily look at it and go, video game. Mm-hmm. That, that's kind of sweet. And admit As it, opposed to Dr. Reed's outfit, which is just ridiculous. Or, um, Eliza's outfit, which is even worse than Newscaster. Mm-hmm. That, that's pretty awful. Yeah. Like, I'm wondering about this trench coat, because it doesn't quite look like Jensen's. It doesn't have the patterned shoulders. Which is a shame, really. Still, if you're into it, it, it works. That's definitely a trench coat that apparently also comes with a vest. Alright. Uh, Tis a thing. Shall we get to the review, or do we want to... Yeah, go, some more go ahead and go to the review. Alright. Time for my... Beat up notebook full of review notes. Notebook. Yeah, unfortunately we haven't gotten any more news regarding the, ga the game I think we're truly looking forward to here on Nerd Talk. I which think one? you can guess which one. Uh, The Old Republic, uh, Mass Effect 3, uh, there's a lot. No, what's wrong with you? The one where you get to kill zombies with a chainsaw cheerleader. Oh. Shoot, I know this one. Lollipop chainsaw. Ah. Uh, <laughs> it was lollipop something. What, you don't want to play that? 
Not particularly. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> Here at Nerd Talk, we're totally looking forward to lollipop changes. Speak for yourself, dude! <laughs> Um, we also did have news regarding Mass Effect 3 that was kind of already discussed, that this has been confirmed that Mass Effect 3 will be the last appearance of Commander Shepard. And so if they do any other Mass Effect 3 themed games, which, Shepard... Which the creators have said they want to do, without mm -hmm. a doubt. So anything said in the Mass Effect universe is still possible, just nothing with that character. Yeah, he's done after this game. This is Well, he or she. This is the Ken end... Ken and Shepard is, of course, male, because... This is the end of... The Adventures of Commander Shepard. <laughs> You're just making Echo angry today. This is this is gonna be our goal for the evening. It, See if we can get him to rage quit chat. Welcome welcome to our <laughs> uh, our one chatter. Usually we have multiple targets. <laughs> I know, right? This is like shooting fish in a barrel. Alright, so yeah, I guess we can get on to it. Deus Ex Human Revolution released last Tuesday, which would have been some date. That would have been the 23rd of August. Holy cow, Pyro's on! Hey! Hi, Pyro! Oh, Pyro made it. Hi! Aren't you supposed to be at work? <laughs> We're more important than work money. There's nerd talk afoot. Yeah, our camera keeps trying to autofocus and it's freaking out. I think out. I'm messing with it by moving forward. Stop it! <laughs> First you box with your microphone, now you Now I'm box boxing with, with the, the camera. camera. Come on, camera. And the Bring camera's it. boxing back. Camera's gonna win. <laughs> All right. You look like a blurry idiot. Yep. So, this game actually serves as a prequel to Deus Ex, uh, the original game. And there's no, there's no subtitle for the original game, because this was before the age of subtitling everything. Deus Ex, the J.C. Denton Diaries, I don't know. So, this game takes place 20 years before the original Deus Ex, so... Um, nanotechnology was new in the first game. You're going to be working with one step back. Uh, in this game, the idea of human augmentation, like actual physical augmentation, is a new concept, and that's where all the controversy in the game comes from. Yep. The argument of whether we should be modifying each other. Um, so, yeah. Starting off, uh, in this game you will be playing as uh, Adam Jensen, who is in no way related to any of the characters in any of the future games. So Idos just kind of However, decided we're going to start he, from scratch. He may in fact be related to Christian Bale because he totally sounds like Bale's Batman. Yeah, that that is potentially true. Um, right down to the way he talks and the way mine handled every situation, really. Did you, you were playing him as Batman. I was, and it was great. But yeah, um, he talks kind of gravelly, like he's about to punch anything that moves. So As if the idea of raising his decibel levels could kill him. No, he does it as a courtesy to everyone around him because his voice is so mega harsh badass it, that like it will expand oh, yeah. your mind we can if you swear hear it too again. loudly. Ass, 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 ass. Oh, you wait, we can say ass to before. begin with. I don't know, do we want the explicit tag? Not particularly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So, oh, wait, my, my notes here say Adam Jensen sounds like Christian Bale's Batman if he were on antidepressants. Yeah, um, Echo's making a really good reference that I think came up to while we were playing. Christian Bale meets Keanu Reeves. With, Look, I think that's just the coat in the shades that might be doing that. Yeah, it, it's totally Neo meets Batman. Like, the, this guy just, he is the total cliche of cyberpunk. That, that's all there is to it. You, you got some Batman in my cyberpunk, and that's what this is. Um, yeah, I, I guess we could go on to our, our main usual categories. So, sights and sounds. Um, soundtrack really smacks heavily of Mass Effect 2. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be what they describe as techno-organic, where they take organic-sounding instruments and purposely try to convert them. Mm -hmm. in order to make this tech, uh, technological soundtrack. It, it really is intelligent sound design, and I really love the soundtrack. Part of why I'm so angry that with my collector's edition of the game, the soundtrack comes on a Blu-ray disc. Which you cannot use on your computer because you don't have a Blu-ray drive. Why would I have a Blu-ray drive? I own a PlayStation 3. 
So yeah, I can't actually get the soundtrack to this game off of that disc, which is a shame, because I really liked it. I thought the soundtrack was beautiful. Um, I did have a bit of problem with the overall sound design, though, because some of the weapons sound like pop guns. Yeah, I'm not even going to deny that for a second. Like, I, I really feel like the revolver is not loud enough. The, in fact, the revolver from uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 that Chris Redfield uses sounds better than this one. Um, the combat rifle just sounds weak, despite the fact that it, it's, 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 it's a gun. It's, it's like tossing, like, beans at you or something yeah. really fast. The, the pistol just sounds like a one-shot version of that. Like, none of these actually sound like real guns, and it's a shame. You know, you'd, you'd think the sound design of the weapons in what's effectively a first- and third-person shooter would come Is first. Is that kind of, like, implicitly... It should be there. Gauges the... Well, it, it kind of implicitly tells you how powerful the weapon is based on its sound, and so you really get mm -hmm. um, what might be a inaccurate impression of a weapon based on the noises that it's making. Yeah, the the 8mm pistol, which or sorry, 10mm, which actually does pack a lot of power. The basic handgun in the game can be used to kill almost any enemy. And it's really good for making headshots. Especially once you get the silencer. Um, it, it sounds like a toy. And and that's that's that sucks. It really is terrible. Um... Most of the character voice acting is 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 pretty spot on. I didn't have a problem with any of it. Obviously, really, we're making fun of the main character nonstop. I I had some problems okay. with the acting. Go ahead. Combined with the really stiff, jerky character models. See, <laughs> I was just talking about the voice. Yes, but the voice acting itself isn't that great either. Everybody sounds evasive. I guess is the word I'm looking for. It's it's like every. And, and, of course, when you combine that, like I said, with the non unrealistic, um, spazzy, lack of eye contact, non-verbals, it just feels like everybody's lying to me all the time. <laughs> because at the start of the game, everyone is. There's no one at the start of the game that's actually being honest with you. Well, no, even, even when you're just, like, completely non-crucial information, like, just, like, hi, how are you? Are you talking about the hobo? Because she's totally lying to you and totally the, like, biggest racial stereotype in this game. Not even gonna touch that. Just so Oh, Letitia. I, I'm not you even so gonna crazy. touch that with a ten-foot stick. That's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Um... Just talking about the voice acting, I didn't have much of a problem with it. I thought it was adequate for what it was trying to do. <sighs> when they needed to convey that someone was is being, like, uh, aggressive and really hard-edged about their convictions, they do that really well. David Seraf, in particular, is voiced spectacularly for what he is. A stuck-up, cutthroat businessman trying to seem like a good guy. Like, down to the point of him calling Jensen son every time he talks to him to try to get him on his side when he needs him. Hmm. Like, that was really spot on and well done. Um, Taggart being this... Well, he's a complete augmentation bigot. But he doesn't well, want to seem... augmentation bigot. But he doesn't want to seem that way. And so they play that off really well in the, the convincing system. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're actually debating with someone, that's really well done and really spectacular. Yeah, I didn't get to make much use of the debating system there. That said, we can jump on to graphics, which I agree with you in the problem that the character models the, the, are the most, terrible. The movements of the models themselves are incredibly stiff and jerky, like everybody's trying to do the robot. And yeah. <laughs> it, it's bad. This and now people are going to be making gifts out of that of me doing the, I, the robot badly. Uh, the it. funniest <laughs> thing is that my brother, who was a huge fan of the original and hasn't done much gaming since, actually walked into the room while I was playing it and was like, did they just recycle the engine? Like, oh no, dude, it's been so long since you played the original Deus Ex, it's not that bad, but uh, we're not talking huge leaps and bounds here. Yeah. It's like by no means is this as bad as the original. No Deus character Ex. has made eye contact with me at all. They're all looking over here while yeah, they're talking they, to me. They tried too hard to do kind of like idle animations on the characters while they're conversing with you. 
And and you're used to like Ellie Noir at this point, where every single little twinge of a character or emotion means something. So your immediate reaction was everyone in Deus Ex is lying to me. <laughs> everyone, everyone comes across as skeevy and slimy. It's because they're not looking at you and they're making directions in random ways. Well, they're just waving their arms all over the place. The guys mucking about over here while you're standing over here, and it's like I'm looking at this guy and like Jensen himself. If if you like interpret him as like a as as a machine of a man and like more of an emotional husk than anything, I guess he's delivering his lines perfectly. <laughs> but... <laughs> Adam Jensen only has one movement or one emotion, and that's rage. No, it's 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 more of like minor annoyance that's verging on rage. He's, he's, he never really kicks it into full rage. He's <laughs> slightly upset at all times. Really. There we go. Adam Jensen, you fail it. And so, day. like, he's trying to, like, accuse somebody or trying to blackmail somebody or something, and, um, and the whole time this person's, like, watching over here, the, the guy looks, like, half asleep because of the way his head's moving. So do you think here. Jensen's always just ticked off because no one nobody's, will look him in the eye? Nobody's properly paying attention to him! I can see why. He's always got those shades on. Adam Jensen, always in the dark. Well, I imagined him without the shades on. To me, him without the shades on looks creepier. Yeah, he did look really weird weird at the the start of the game. The weird cheekbone reconstruction that he went under, and like the little like black... um... The discs that are installed into his cheekbones so he has shades. It's It's his heads-up display. It's not just... It's not just that, it's it's like there's like a little receptive word I'm looking for. Thing that the shades slide up into when they're not in use. A retractor? Yeah. And, uh, Which they're in use for the rest of the game. He never takes them off. And, yeah, so the, those just look freaky. When they're, when they're not covered by the fact that the shades are in use. So... Yeah, um... Echo, those shades stay on his face because they're welded into his cheekbones. Yeah, which make his cheekbones look weird. Which I guess, you know, makes him look kind of untrustworthy because he's got, like, the sour pronounced cheekbones. He also has a pointed chin. Don't know if you noticed that. Like, I know it's supposed to be his facial hair is pointed, but really the character model, the way it's rendered, just looks like that is Adam Jensen's chin and he just has... Uh, facial hair it's, over it's it. like this it's like just vroom, vroom. <laughs> mm-hmm. all right so the the environmental graphics are good i i definitely like that i i love the art style in this game apart from the clothing because everyone looks like they're dressed for a cyberpunk renaissance fair it's it's like half the characters work at hot topic and the rest of them work at like some sort of weird cyberpunk hot rags <laughs> Yeah, um, especially the newscaster. She gets, like, like, the weirdest outfits in this game. She's got some weird lolly goth, like, corset skirt combo, and I'm like, no journalist would be caught dead wearing that! Yeah, I, I also don't understand in the open sequence, like, what you see Megan wearing... No scientist would wear She's that got, to like, work. She's got, like, this really high, like, Victorian collar with, like, ruffles all over it, and I'm like... This is completely impractical, and shoes are all, like, pointy, and... <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had a Final Fantasy thirteen rip. Nice. Go, chat. <laughs> Alright, um... Uh, pink is on, and he did not appreciate that. <laughs> Hi, Pink. So, uh, yeah, it... I, I know that they were trying to go for a specific artistic... For the, the theory is that we're going to take Renaissance clothing and bring it into the future... But it really distracts you from the game. Yeah, it's, When you're it's looking sh- at the newscaster and going, what the heck is she wearing and how does that work? It, it's not making me focus on her as a character. How is that seen in any way? It, doesn't, it, it ruins her credibility, which is the one thing that journalists need to really work on preserving. Of course, spoilers, when you find out she's an AI, it really just makes, just like, oh, she's not wearing anything. Some idiot just programmed that. But yeah, yeah, um, echo that that little I don't know, with the Final Fantasy Easter egg 28 Easter egg, poster on the wall. That was hilarious because I just look at that and go, Yeah, I could see Square Enix thinking that a blade attached to the side of someone's knee would be an effective weapon. 
That that was actually a really awesome Easter egg. And there's a ton of them in here. There's references to RoboCop, uh, Demolition Man. Uh, the, the security cameras, if you look at them on the side, they say Big Bro on them. Which would be uh, 1984. Yes. So, yeah. That, Getting all Orwellian up in here. There are absolutely wonderful literary and pop culture references in this uh, game. So, I guess moving on. Story and characters. Um, it's kind of the oldest video game story ever. Rescue your princess. Or in this case, scientist. Also ex-girlfriend. Yeah, it still never got any definition of what happened there. It's not a lot... It's... Well... But there, there's never really anything in there. It, it's, oh no, some dudes took your princess. Go save her. Or actually find out what happened to her and then go save her. She's on another continent, Pink. Hey, yeehaw, welcome to chat. Um... Jensen himself is kind of designed to be a blank slate, and that's because you're directing his actions. Yeah. And deciding what you want him to do. So, like, if you want to take the mission of break into the police station for information and start shooting cops, sure. I tried that. You don't get XP for killing cops. I guess that's uh, Idos' subtle way of saying you shouldn't kill cops in games. Unless you're playing Prototype, at which point they give great experience. It's just a game. <laughs> yeah, um... Jensen really has to be designed as a blank slate, though, because he, he needs to react the way you want him to. He needs to have lines that you tell him what he's going to say. Mm -hmm. It's they've, they've got kind of a knockoff of the conversation wheel, only instead of, like, a vague idea behind what you want to say, it'll also show you... Um, exactly the words that is going that are going to come out of Jensen's mouth, which I can appreciate because <laughs> there have been some times, say during Mass Effect Two, where you go to pick a di dialogue option and something comes out of their uh, out of your Shepard's mouth that is completely out of left field from what you were expecting he he or she would say. Yeah, um, I'm definitely still remembering La Noirs accuse the small child of lying. You killed your mother, didn't you? Just, dude, back it up two yeah, notches. Yeah, wasn't she in high school? I mean, she was a teenager, but I just accused a teenager who'd just been told that her mom was killed that she did it. You're a terrible person. I'm a terrible cop. You're the worst detective. I am the worst detective ever. All right, um, well, let's go over some of the other characters. Uh, first off, the f first one you'll really talk to in-game is uh, Frank Pritchard. Oh, Pritchard. Pritchard's kind of... Nuclear snake. He's kind of a douche, actually. <laughs> and he's supposed to. He's the tech security guy for Seraph Industries, the uh, augmentation manufacturer that you happen to work for. Um, and at the start of the game, pretty much the first time you really meet him, it's him blaming you for what happened. So, I guess long story short is some dudes blow up your place of work. And I guess Pritchard has decided that that is your fault. Because you were supposed to be the security guy. Like, you were supposed to stop them single-handedly. He's like, well, what were you doing? Uh, fighting for my life, the last I checked. <laughs> you, know, you weren't really fighting for your life. You got thrown through a plate scene. glass window. That, that cutscene, man. You got tossed through glass. You got glass. Your innards are falling. Well, they should have been falling out. Instead, they're just kind of yeah, sitting your there like are some kind of anatomical di di diagram. <laughs> It's, it's full of glass, got set on fire, got shot. In the head, I think. So. Yeah, he, he did get shot Adam in the Jensen head. Jensen just had, like, the worst day. Wakes up and finds out, well, we replaced all four of your major limbs, your lungs, um, your eyes. Part of your brain. Part of your brain, your spine. But we need you to get back to work. And your skin. They and the flesh, skin. yeah. Let me see. Anything else? Yep, yeah, no, I think that's all. I can't think of many worse days. And there's a later boss fight that really gives credence to... I have a... I have a, <laughs> I have a Are we hypothesis. discussing this theory? Does this theory have to come up? Because chat's going to love talking about this. We're thinking... My, my, my hypothesis here is that... 
post um, accident, they decided that his genitals were not exactly top priority, and so I'm under the impression that Adam Jensen just has no junk. Adam Jensen. Ken doll. Just is in fact a Ken doll. I, I'm just gonna toss that out there because it would explain so much, like why he's so jaded and detached from life, and, and why <laughs> he's like these cyber upgrades that allow me to punch through walls and turn invisible and absorb bullets. They suck. I don't want these. I didn't choose this. And my life is so hard. Right? So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely thinking that might be the case. Because you fight with somebody later who's, like, super augmented, and it's just, like, muscular structure, and, like, he's not wearing any clothes. Yeah, so when, when you finally get to fight there. Namir, you realize, huh, Namir is completely, uh... Augmented from the neck down. Yeah, right? He's got... He's got cybernetic musculature, but thankfully nothing there. We're not having a repeat of Dante's Inferno. <laughs> yeah, Fighting so. a beard, his giant junk. <laughs> yeah, no. So there's no no, no robo augmented junk. There's just nothing there. Could explain why Jensen wasn't all that happy to have found Megan. In fact, it more or less it just angered him. Uh, uh, there are so many jokes that I'm restraining myself from making right now. <laughs> Adam! Oh, you're augmented. Look, I was just gonna say we should be friends. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna touch that. Worst elevator conversation ever. <laughs> so yeah, um, Pritchard, for what it's worth, is entertaining, and he, he he's a good character just to check your ego, because anytime you're doing really well, Pritchard is more than happy to come on the intercom and just insult you for some reason. Like, well, they could have done it a different way. Um, even, like, when you managed to do everything flawlessly, like, yeah, I just totally snuck past these 25 guards and crept through the air ducts and He's got just in. like, well, while you were busy crawling through vents and being all sneaky-sneaky, I was actually doing my job. <laughs> yeah, I love that he... If you play the game one way, he insults you by calling you Attila the Hun for killing everyone. And if you play it the other way, where you snuck in, he calls you Mahatma Gandhi because you didn't kill anyone. Just like, what do you want, man? Should I have killed a couple and left the other ones living? <laughs> Did you have a kill quota I was supposed to meet? In which case, I would have outperformed standards, so... Right? You, you could have told me that, yes, I expect you to kill four of them, and the other six must live. Just to scare the tar out of a few of them, you know. Show them that they, do, they don't want to come back. Um, I really like the David Seraph character. I, I think he is well written and well acted. Um, he, he's a businessman who does whatever he needs to to succeed. He's idealistic in that he wants humanity to have these augmentations. You can see that he believes in it because he has an augmented right arm. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really cool. It, it says a lot about him. That's uh, there's some of the, the other high-end characters that I don't like so much, like Hugh Darrow. Hugh Darrow is one of those characters who's supposed to be, like, this powerful commanding presence. You know, he's been rumored since the beginning of the game, and you finally meet him, and it's just like, that's it. And even when you find out, like, his grand motive for the big the big reveal of the game, it's like, that, that's that been your problem this whole time? Dude, we could have settled this with, like, a pirate solution. Wah, wah. And, yeah, I, I just don't like that character, but overall, it, it's not terrible. I mean, you we can make fun of Adam Jensen all day long for wanting to be, uh, um, wanting to be Batman, but it works. Batman and Neo's love child. I, I, Robot love child. I, I really love liked, child. uh, I liked him more than the character in the second game, which, that's not saying much, and... I think he's got more personality than J.C. Denton, but then again, it's also been probably close to a decade since I played Deus Ex. Uh, so moving on, gameplay, because there is some in this. It is mostly a third-person uh, tactical shooter that also or, allows you to go into first person. Or you could do the sneaky, sneaky route. Yep. Like Sen and Pyrosim also did. Yeah, you can totally play this like it's a Splinter Cell game where... To cross into an enemy's line of sight is practically the same thing as death. However, I like that, you know, if I want to go around and stab everybody with my super cool blades that come out of my shit, uh, forearms, Wolverine style, and I don't get punished for that. 
Yeah, no, if you just want to run around taking out everyone in your environment, do it. In fact, the end of the game where you're supposed to be sneaking around not wanting to hurt these uh, these guys who've been driven crazy, I could very well just picture you running through just hosing down everyone with lead. I played it as, I'm Batman, I'm going to walk through and beat everyone up. So I didn't kill a single one of them, but man, there were a lot of people waking up with headaches. I want an achievement for getting through it that way. I, I think I think there are achievements for getting through the entire game without killing anybody except for the, obviously the bosses. Yeah, which is actually really hard in that last section because there are a ton of crazy dudes. Um, you had you had one really hilarious strategy that I wanted to share where you okay. augmented your lungs to make you immune to gas and poison. And I was just dropping gas grenades on myself. You just dropped. Did you just? You just let all the crazies come at you, dropped the gas grenade, and then just stood there while everybody else coughed and passed out. Just proudly stood there in the gas. Just like, yep, you'll all try to kill me and I'm just going to stand here getting a nice gas bath. Gas bath sounds like a not fun thing yes, to Echo, do. Yes, Echo, come at me bro is the appropriate quote, I think. And I believe Pixie actually used it several times during the game. <laughs> Can you step? <laughs> I have gas. <laughs> Lethal gas. Actually, not have gas. Um, so yeah, that that was definitely cool. I love the hacking mechanic in this. This is actually the first video game where I have enjoyed the hacking process. Because you actually go through, you log into the computer, it shows your entry point, your I.O. port, and you have to navigate the pathways in the computer to get to either a register or to get to the... Uh, intrusion detection software and take control of it. That's actually it was actually a really cool system. I absolutely loved it. And, and even people I know who are tech savvy, I, I actually described that to the process to them. They were like, "Yeah, that actually sounds accurate." Mm. So you go through, and every time you capture a node, it there's a percentage that you're going to be detected. If you upgrade your hacking ability, there's less of a chance for that. Uh, once you've captured a node, you have the option to either move on to another node, or you can actually fortify it to make it harder for the detection software to get to you. You also have two types of viruses that you can use to your advantage. One's called Nuke, which instantly and undetectably takes over a node. And you have the Stop one, which freezes any detection software for five seconds and allows you to keep moving. So both of those are very useful. It's, it's just cool. And as you go and take control of more systems, as you increase your abilities, you actually can get bonuses like extra XP, credits, um, different viruses. You, you get rewarded for doing this thing. Like to the point where I was doing that as my primary form of XP towards the end of the game. Um, let's see. There's also the social discussion mechanic. Uh, there are several points in the game where you're going to have to talk your way either into getting some information or or say or at out the of very problem. beginning there's a hostage situation you're trying to get this guy to let the hostage go or whatever you could just i guess run up and shoot him but the oh yeah you can flat out, out say just you're going to take out this guy mm -hmm. but should you want to try and negotiate for the hostages release there's like a little it's it's a mini, mini game, game? Yeah. yeah where you have to try to convince you or you have to try to convince the opposition to give you what you want. And once you have the upgrade for that, if you've upgraded your discussion skills through, like, I think it's like a pheromone release upgrade, mm -hmm. so that would be a skin upgrade, um, you can actually use that to persuade them, and you get a little meter that lets you read the person, what kind of personality they are, uh, alpha, beta, or omega. Um, and you can tell how close you are to convincing them. Obviously, real people are more complex than that. <laughs> Um, the the but biggest these are robots, the biggest so. part of once you have the augmentation is just getting close enough to be able to use the thing because they'd have to be able to pick up the pheromones as it is so you just need to talk your way to getting as close to them as possible so that you can actually use your L one just like hey. Look, buddy I know we're arguing right now over the fate of humanity but Would you can come I here and smell me for can a I have a hug. <laughs> Just, just get close enough to smell me. Adam Jensen solving <laughs> humanity's problems through hugs, followed by punches. Sort of like Batman and the Care Bears team up type yes, of thing. Yes, that's what this is. It's Batman with a giant rainbow on his chest. 
No, it's like a bat, but like the wings are like rainbows. <laughs> Someone will draw that. Artists, get on that. Go. Um, the we should come up with some dumb crap on this show. <laughs> the tutorials are kind of boring, to be honest. Um, when you go through the opening sections of the game, it'll be like, hold the select button to hear the tutorial. And it's like narrated by the most monotone <laughs> woman ever. It, she was boring. I was like, can I have a nap now? <laughs> Yeah, it, it's It's not terrible. a very engaging way to get somebody to retain any information, for one. As you would know as a teacher. And, like, as immersive as this game is, you'd think they could have done, like, um, Pritchard yelling at you over the mic how to do things. That would have made it at least more interesting. And, and just, he could have been all like, I bet you can't do this, nub. And just put, like, a caption on the bottom of the screen, like, how to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, even that would have worked better. That would have been more immersive that way, but... Yeah, I would have loved Pritchard making As fun of As opposed to just, you know, some, like, monotone robot lady voice going, you know, you should press and hold L1. Sometimes in combat, power. you might need to jump. Press X to jump. It is completely flat, like... Yeah, it, it's terrible. Um, Worst voice acting in the game? That chick. One of the things I really did love about this game, though, was right from the start, how they set up the difficulty... Uh, menu like it you pull up when you start a new game it'll say there are three options yep tell me a story which will p place less emphasis on combat and more on just giving you the plot it, so it's the game's it. easy mode but it's not coddling you by telling you that it's, yeah it, it's saying i'm just here for the story give me that um next is give me a challenge which is the default setting it's um a little bit of everything yeah, it, it's harder, but it's not crazy. You, An average player should be able to get through the game like this. And then there's Give Me Deus Ex, which from the name you would think that that would be the default mode, but it's actually just the combat-heavy, I'm in this to play a shooter or whatever. Or a stealth play. game. It's I, I'm the in this to hardcore be in, mode. In, I'm in this to be a hardcore fanatic about this. I, I want to completely test my skills against this. and um, Hopefully I'll live. It's, it's for those of a more, I guess, competitive nature. Yep. Uh, I really liked that. That It wasn't like, here's your basic easy, medium, and hard that so many companies do. That, it, 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 I, I, it I was really, more immersive to the environment. I will say there... I, I'm, I, I will say right now, I'm bad at stealth. I'm, I'm not very good at it. That's why I usually do things guns blazing. Mm -hmm. um, and so... I, 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 if I might be interested in the story, or for example, like the later levels of Portal, could not do those. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, and, and so, the, the fact that the game doesn't patronize you for not being quite up to par. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that being said, I mean, playing on the default mode, if you just go in, like, and just murder everything, you're usually pretty fine. Yeah, no, you... The later levels, I just got really sick of stealth and was just like, I'm going Murder to take everyone. out everything see, in my every, way. If everyone is dead on the level, the game doesn't spawn more enemies or any crap like that. Mm -hmm. And so, if you just kill everyone in that level, then nobody's going to stop you from snooping around or getting to where you need to go or anything. You can just stroll right on through everything. Yeah. I found it to be a lot less work. Versus me, who was crouched down in environments for, like, five minutes waiting to learn guard patterns and such. And, like, oh, is, is he turned around yet? What, what's his path leading him to do? You gotta sneak up behind him and be all for chop. Because and... literally these people will just report for, like, eight-hour work shifts and just be like, Alright, Bob, you're gonna walk from that spot 15 feet over there to this spot 20 feet over here. And... You're going to turn around this direction each time, and you're going to walk at the same exact speed each time. And don't you dare think about going to the bathroom. Uh, if you go to the bathroom, you are fired. However, you can sit here for about five to ten seconds and yeah. stare at that TV if you want. And you can lean on the rail when you reach the end of this path. So we're clear on that? All right, enjoy the next eight hours. See you later. <laughs> it just makes me laugh. Video game AI is a silly thing. There was... There was a pretty funny moment with the game's AI failing rather hard. Go ahead. Um, that's really more of a visual story. And so unless we want to move the camera, I don't know if this is going to work. But I will try. Um, Should I be directing the camera towards you or something? 
So I'm, I'm going to try and explain this. Uh, Those of you listening can just check the video later. I, I, I was, I was, I was attempting to do the sneaky thing, because there were lots of dudes and they had lots of armor and guns that far exceeded my. Capacity. She was probably sieging the police station. And. I, I, I opened a door and the guy's like path was coming through. I didn't like check as carefully as Sen would have and so that's I opened the door. The guy freaks out and goes to goes to investigate what, what the heck just happened. So I, I I hurry up, I close the door and I hide um behind like where the hinge would be so that the door um when opened it opened it would open in her. front of me. Yeah. And provide like a little wall there. I was expecting to either one get smacked with the door so hard that it would cause damage, which, did, which didn't happen, or two that the guy would immediately like see me because there is a small window in the door. So he could see right through the window in the center of the door. Yes, in theory. But the guy, all he did was he opened the door, looked into the room, saw there was no one in the room, and then turned around and left. And complained about his long hours making him imagine things. Geniuses. I was standing, like, with, like, three inches of wood between me and this guy. Looking directly at him. <laughs> and I'm like, oh crap, this isn't gonna work. There's no way this is gonna work. I'm gonna die and I'm and gonna have to load to a save that was, like, three minutes ago. And If guards were like this in real life, I might just take up bank robbing for the fun of it. <laughs> it was hilarious. I about died laughing. So, yeah. Um... Alright, so I guess we should move on to our last category, which would be, is it fun? Um, well, there's certainly some replay value involved. Um, there are like 20 different ways to solve every problem, whether you want to sneak around, whether you want to kill your way through it, uh, whether you want to hack things in order to make, pa make new paths, punch a wall to make a new path, um, and anything and, and any combination of your augmentations and the way that you level those up, and in the order in which you level those up, can make certain things easier, and it, it just changes the whole way that you play the game, depending yeah. on how you will, I, a lot those things. I did actually end up becoming Batman eventually, because I, I gained the Icarus Descent system, which allows me to leap off of any tall structure and just glide yeah. down. It, 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 he doesn't just glide down, it's more of a... I make, it, I make an electric whoosh parachute, Oof. and then I'm, he looks around I'm, going, I'm Batman. Look how awesome that was. And people on the street are just like... Hey, Nobody even tends to look! Everyone, everyone the hobos are unimpressed. From, anyone in a trench coat can just electrically descend to the street. Not impressed. Whatever. <laughs> Jerks. So, um, there's that. Um, but one of the problems I did have is that they, they were praising themselves so much for, yeah, we've got four different endings that are all different. And you can access all of them from the exact same point in the game. There, there's no point in the game where it's like, yes, this ending is now closed off to you because of something you did. You literally reach the end of the journey, and it's, well, there's four buttons here. Pick your ending. Which I think is kind of weak. Huh. At least with the original Deus Ex, each ending was a different challenge that you could go do. Hmm. Yeah, I, I really don't like that. You hit the end of this quest, and it's like... Push your ending. Well, it's like, a kind of towards... It reminds me a little bit of KOTOR. Um, Star Wars, Nice of the Old Republic, came out in 2003. Uh, where you could have played... It didn't matter what alignment, really, that you played up through, like, the entirety of the game. You get to one certain point towards the end in, like, the last, I'd and say, And it's like, like two well, hours. your alignment was this way. Here's your ending. No, it's... it's You could play whichever way, up through that way. And you get to this one point within the last two hours of the game. You make one choice, and that determines the rest of the game. Hmm. Yeah, no, this was literally just... And it could be completely polar opposite shift from the last, like, 50-some hours that you would put in before that. Yeah, this this isn't even that. This is, you got to the last room in the game and pushed the button for your ending. Hmm. They are all sitting in the same room. There is no challenge between you and them. It's just, go ahead, pick your ending. I don't care. Which is kind of weak. In fact, really weak. Because, like... He got further than me. In, in yeah. the original game, your last boss changed depending on what you were doing. Mm -hmm. Depending on how you ended the game. You would get into this facility, and 
you were presented with three different endings. Um, you could completely shut down all of the nano augmentations. You could uh, help the guy and just basically become a member of the Illuminati. Or you could fuse yourself with the machine that is controlling all of the nano augmentations and take control of it. Three very different endings that each required a different set of objectives to complete. That was neat. This was, it's, go ahead and pick. It's like the narrator just walked away and was like, go ahead, do, pick an ending. Uh, I'm going to go get coffee. Sandwich. <laughs> I really think that sucks. So don't don't expect like a grand ending here that that you defined with your actions. I, 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 th I think what you're what you're getting at here is is more about the journey. Yeah, I the ends a bit. My my actual journey didn't lead to anything special at the end. It didn't have any impact whatsoever on the ending I got. I just here's your buttons, click one, and then you could immediately load the save. You could just hit the continue button when it brought you back to the menu, and it would load right before you pressed a button. So you could watch so you all could four watch in all one four. sitting? Yeah. Hmm. I watched all four in the span of, like, ten minutes. That kind of sucks. Yeah. There's... So, the replay value comes from just playing the game different ways. If you want to try playing through it as a shooter, sure. If you already did the shooter, well, try playing through with stealth. I, I think we ought to point out that it's clear that this game was first designed for the PC and then... Yeah, of, without a doubt. A lot of the controls are very, like, clunky and awkward on a console. Mm -hmm. Um, trying to get to... Although I guess they took away the quick save, quick load button, so you have to go to menus for those either way. Yeah, well, but, but but entering, like, a keyboard password, it takes longer in a console version, because most of us don't have, have a, keyboard. a keyboard. Yeah. Or, um... Or digital combination. Yeah, or there's, uh... Inventory management. Yeah. Is clearly the, designed for PC. Where you could, you know, move things with your mouse, that would be a lot more faster and more efficient. But that's not saying that it's bad on the console. Um, the controls are definitely streamlined to work. It's not perfect, using but it's map, functional. Using the map, really difficult. Yeah, because in the PC version, you can apparently make custom waypoints for yourself and, and label information on your little map. Mm. Can't do that in the console. No, which made the map pretty darn useless for me, actually. And from what I can tell, the PC version of the game isn't a technology hog. It's, it's not like... It, you wouldn't need a state-of-the-art computer to run this and run it uh, to look well. The load times are kind of crap. Yeah, and that that's a problem on on all versions of the game that you can Despite expect. Despite the fact that I've, I've installed this on my console, why am I getting load screens? Yeah, there's there's at least a 20 to 25 second load screen between areas. Uh, Pyrosim was actually saying that he was getting as many as two minutes of load screen. And he was playing the PC version, which mm -hmm. could get really annoying in some quest hubs that are, have multiple areas. That you need to go um, through. Detroit may be all one area, but there are internal structures in Detroit. Like yeah, if you go like into the Sarah building, buildings, or the or the company's building, or um, the Lim facility, or yep. Uh, so there would be a, station, there would be a separate load are... screen for all of those. And like just to do the police station section, you have to go through at least uh, three load screens to finish that area, because you have to go through the sewers, which would mean you load it into the general Detroit area. You have to climb into the upper area of the police station, which would be a load screen. Go out of the police station, another load screen, so that's two we're at right now. And then go in the front door of the police station, so that's three load screens. That's about 45 seconds worth of time that you weren't playing the game because it was busy loading. So, there is that. Um, I'd, I'd warn you that might impact your, like, fun levels or whatever. Yeah. You get used to it, though, and the information they put on the screen is actually entertaining. There is no option to change the control scheme on the console. Which is kind of weird. You'd think we would have gotten through that by now. Because I was, uh, for, for, like, what was that, the first hour I played figure, I was having some problems. Because yeah. I was used to using um, the, the left, it's the left bumper, I guess, on... Um, on uh, the 360 in order to aim my weapons in Mass Effect 2, for instance. Mm -hmm. And that's the button that you press to lean up against cover in Deus Ex HR. And so you could see how in a firefight that might get really confusing when you're trying to aim and instead you go, like, attaching and detaching yourself from 
a surface. Yep. So it, it, I would have appreciated the option to um, customize my control settings to something that would be more comfortable for my own experience and associate quickly to things that I was already familiar with. Mm -hmm. So there is that. All right, so I guess on to the last thing. Is it fun? Was it worth playing? I, I, I definitely can say I was entertained. If, if, even if it was for, complete, for reasons that the developers completely did not intend. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I did play through the entire game and plan to play through it once more. Just slightly different methods to get through everything now that I know more of what can be done. I really like it. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the original game, played that multiple times, and I think this is actually a worthy sequel. Mm -hmm. Prequel. Cool. I, I think IDOS Montreal embraced the idea of what the original was and made it work in for a new generation of gamers. Because the original Deus Ex would not hold up. There's mm -hmm. no way. There's also there's also a lot of um, like philosophy and subtext to this. Pyrosim will definitely talk about this more in his blog post on Pyrosim's Take, uh, which you can find on our homepage at nerdtalkshow.com. Uh, there's there's definitely a lot of subtext and a lot of underlying meanings and context to things which you could miss and it wouldn't like really detract anything from your gameplay experience to not know. Yeah, no, you can treat this entire game as if it's just like a Mario game. Go save the princess. However, there's there's a whole lot of there's a whole lot of other like I said subtext to this game that might enrich your experience if you know to look for them or can or configure them out. Yeah, there's um, there's tons of books that you can pick up in the environment, emails that make the conspiracy seem deeper than No, just just like references within the structure of the design itself. Mm -hmm. The guy's name is Adam. Yeah, I know. And being the first to really unlock augmentation powers and, and kind of as the genesis for all the other Yeah. It, it's, um, it's definitely the guy from the references. the guy from the last game, his name was J C. Yeah, that was intentional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's, there's a whole lot of other um, points that kind of, um, whether you're looking for them or not, can either be beating you over the head with them or could be like a, a subtle fun surprise when you figure it out later. Yeah, there, there's also... Uh, Pyro will, Pyroson will definitely be um, uh, delving a little more deeply into this in his blog, so you should definitely check that out once that goes up. Okay, so I guess we can go ahead and end for the week. Um, quick shout out, though, to the Dragon's Refuge in Piatone, Illinois. Um, we visit Apparently you were there. Yep, I visited them recently. and uh, Despite it the fact that it's closer to my house. <laughs> yeah, it, it's this little game store that just opened up in Piatone, uh, pretty close to where we both live. Um, really cool guys there. Uh, we've purchased magic cards there. I played some War Machine there. Uh, actually, probably the only War Machine stockist like in the area, like within an hour drive. Mm. So... Really cool guys. Uh, they do custom orders if you're willing to uh, prepay a bit to get that. Um, I love the fact that they barely sell any GW product. They're like, You've what, just got what like... does this store specialize in? Well, they've got Privateer, Magic, and and they actually stock a ton of Malifaux, which I find weird because that's something you usually don't see in a small game store. So yeah, um, just a quick shout out. Uh, guys were awesome. Loved having you. And hey, we have dirt cheap Advertising, if anyone's interested. Yep, I can totally craft commercials and whatnot. Nerd talk will whore for you. <laughs> I have no reaction to that. There's nothing. I think I can that's where you that. have to cut it for the night. <laughs> All right. Um. In the meanwhile, I'm Pixie. I'm Sen. And this has been your weekly edition of Nerd Talk. We'll see you next week, guys. Bye. <laughs>